John. So we'll get a, a good uh, good look at this, uh, especially considering we actually featured a similar matchup. Yeah. Last so round. what'll be interesting to see how. Because blue, white, red flash is still somewhat of a new archetype, it's interesting to see how these players are building it differently. We already saw Drew Levin playing the deck, uh, actually kind of get steamrolled by a Jun matchup yeah. earlier in the or just last round. Mm -hmm. But this time we're gonna we're gonna look at some different takes on the deck. Uh, Matt Costa, for example, is running three Pillar of Flame. He's putting two Turn Burns in his deck along with two Supreme Verdicts in the main. Um, and he has fewer creatures, no right. Thunder Mahalkites in the main. And then uh, shaved an auger, shaved the Snapcaster. Right. right. So only only ten creatures in his deck, so a little more on the control plan, but yet again, no Etherlings. Right. Uh, and we were talking about that earlier. He was actually the player we were speaking to about the uh, about Aetherling as, you know, a win condition. Uh, and it seems like such a good win condition, but in this format, his logic is it just... There's so many decks that can just fog it for the turn, right? Yeah, I right? think I was talking about with Dave Dave Shields when I was talking mm -hmm. to him about the cards, put it really great in saying that Aetherling wins when you have 10 lands in play, but you've already won if you have 10 lands in yeah. play. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's one way to look at it. So uh, so we'll see uh, how Matt, Matt Costa fares without the Aetherling. Um, now, I think one of the interesting things uh, you know, about these blue-white-red lists, they're all adopting some of these cards from Dragon's Maze. We saw War Leader's Helix. Uh, Matt Costa also has War Leader's Helix, one copy. He's got a copy of Renounce the Guild's main deck. Uh, he's also got Turnburn, as you mentioned. And I think these these split cards are really doing a lot of uh, a lot of work, I think, in the format. We're, we're seeing more and more of them, and I think uh, Turn and Burn is one of the more versatile cards, especially in a deck with Snapcaster Mage. Now, you know, we, this may come up. Uh, you cannot fuse cards Unless they are in your hand, so you can't snapcaster, and then uh, uh, snapcaster a turn burn and fuse. But what you can do is snapcaster, and then targeting the uh, turn side and use the snapcaster to block as kind of the burn side. If uh, if you are facing down like an attacking thrag tusk, for example, so you still get full value out of it in certain situations, which is kind of uh, appealing. So we're underway. Yeah, First I play of the game is just a think twice from Matt Costa and a bunch of lands. A bunch, a bunch of lands from Jeremy Bowman. And that's pretty typical for this matchup as we saw last round. Um, there's a lot of time for players really to develop their game plans here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is like one of those matchups where Farseek is really great for Jund. Um, Did not see a Farseek uh, yet for Jeremy. No, but he's on the play, which is, yeah. which is, is something in and of itself. No need to uh, steal the, the initiative with the Farseek. <laughs> Uh, or at least he's not necessarily behind. He's already ahead. So we've got three mana here for a Vampire Nighthawk. Yeah, Cavern of Souls, almost certainly naming vampires. Remember, right. he also has Olivia Voldaren in his deck. Yeah. Yeah, because he needs for the second black mana, which he didn't have before. And Cavern of Souls, a pretty important card in the matchup. And I like the play of just passing the turn here. Costa makes his fourth line. He didn't flashback think twice. Mm -hmm. He is really e grinding for every bit of card advantage possible. Remember that that think twice would have forced him to play something on his main phase or discard as it would have moved him up to nine cards. So rather than get that card selection, Matt's really just trying to get as many cards as possible. All right. So uh, we do have confirmation that Cavern is on Vampire. Seems like the, the value play there. You get the... You get the Vampire Nighthawk, you get the Olivia Voldaren. Uncounterable. So, uh, Restoration Angel from Matt Costa to end Jeremy's turn, and now Matt untaps. Yeah, yeah so it's interesting he, didn't, he opted not to trade the Restoration Angel with the Vampire Nighthawk. Mm -hmm. uh, he's instead trying to, well, you could say race it, but that's not really true, because Vampire yeah. Nighthawk wins that race. He's waiting until he can find a kill spell to deal with Nighthawk. Um, and he's really once again just making the full use of all of his cards here. You know, he'll eventually draw the kill spell, and this gives him permission now, instead of killing Nighthawk, to flash back Think Twice. So Jeremy here on his turn. Looks like he's... Is that a tragic slip in yeah. the front? I think he's a tragic slip and a hunt master of the fells at the very least. Yeah, that, it looks like that to me too. He's got the checklist card. Probably not Delver of Secrets. Nighthawk, in for two. Yeah, and I really like... How, how Costa's sculpting this right now. Um, you know, just really waiting to get the kill spell for Nighthawk. And it's gonna force Jeremy to commit more to the board. Here you see a Rakdos key rune, and that is going to be followed by a Huntmaster of the Fells off of the mana generated from that key rune. One of those nicer plays that, that uh, 
you can see off of these kind of cards, uh, you know, you can do it with uh, signets and things like that. So you actually use the mana immediately. Right, so, so this might be enough. You see, Matt Costa in his hand has a Supreme Verdict. So unlike some of the blue-white-red control decks, uh, he's running to Supreme Verdict in the main. The question is, what's going to be enough threat for him to fire off the trigger on the Supreme Verdict? Certainly Huntmaster puts some pressure on there, but if you know Costa at all as a player, he's probably going to play that card as sparingly as possible. You know, he's, one of the things is how much, you definitely want to use your life total as a resource here. Right. And the question is, how many life points can you actually spend before you have to cast the Supreme Verdict? Yeah. And also, you know, he, he's, the Verdict deals with his, uh, you know, gets his angel off the table, too, so he's actually losing a card now, The there. bigger restriction is that he wants, to, if he doesn't play something main phase, Huntmaster will flip. And actually, he's willing to let Huntmaster flip and take the damage that comes with that. Yeah, so that's what he does. Huntmaster flips. That's a lot of life points he's sacrificing. It's at least six that he's sacrificing just to get more value, the for the possibility of more value on the Supreme Verdict. You know, two off the Huntmaster, and then four more off unblocked creatures. That said, most, other than Olivia Voldar in his hand, Jeremy has committed most of his threats to the board. His cards remaining are things like Tragic Slip, Bonfire of the Damned. He's going to finish off the re Restoration Angel. So now that opens things up for Matt to uh, potentially cast this Verdict next turn. Well, and he's going to have to. This is yeah. a lot of damage that Jeremy's <laughs> I doing. I can't imagine he wants that much value out of it to, to yeah, not this is, cast Yeah, this will put Matt turn. down to one. <laughs> and then maybe the Matt just is flooding on lands. I'm not sure. It looks like he has quite a few of them. Yeah. All right, we'll see Supreme Verdict. Remember, this Rakdos key rune is lethal right now. Not to mention the fact that Jeremy has a couple of cards that, you know, he plays, what, Pillar of Flame, I imagine. Yeah, I, I think Jeremy may be able to, to just do something here that, oh, is that a Thundermall Hellkite? And we'll see if it is. And it um, is. That's going to, you know, Matt can syncopate it, but that's not going to matter. Yeah. And Jeremy Bowman gets the first game. Yeah, not quite sure what was going on there. Uh, I think you were right. I think he was trying to get a lot of value out of the Supreme Verdict, but at the same time, he was really just bricking on spells. Like yeah, I, the Supreme Verdict, he, I think because he was flood on lands, he knew that he had to make the Supreme Verdict count. He may have waited one turn too late in making it count. You know, as a result, he was at one, and he was able to get finished off by that Thundermaw Hellkite. Yeah. Though, to be fair, I'm not sure he had the answer to Hellkite in his hand anyway. Yeah, or even to, to the key rune, because, right. uh, yeah, I, we didn't get a good look. So uh, the key rune by itself was lethal. So we're gonna go to the sideboards here. Um, on Matt's side of things, uh, he's got well quite a few more answers. Like kind of a lot of extras of uh, of a lot of some of the cards he already has. Yeah. So interesting. We've seen blue, white, red really struggle with John and the fact that just all its threats hit so hard. Yeah. One of the first things that I'm really curious to see is how Matt Costa deals with that. I mean, you'd say he has some conditional answers. He has another War Leader's Helix. He has an Oblivion Ring. He has his own, th which, you know, are good ways to answer Jun's threats. He also may go the path of playing his own Thunder Maw Hellkites, putting them in. Uh, we saw that Drew Levin, who had one in the main deck and two in the sideboard, boarded up all the way to three Thunder Maws. Matt yeah. may go with a 0-3 split, might still make the same play of moving up to three. Uh, he, one card that Matt will not have to deal with, it looks like, is Sire of Insanity. It's only one in the main deck. Okay, so there is one. Didn't catch that the first time. There's no second one in the board. It right. Like. So it's still a card that uh, that is possible well, what in the game. Yeah, what Jeremy has on his board, he still has you know a lot of the cards we'd expect out of Jund. He has the Dead Bridge Chant. Extra know, Rakdos Return. Actos, extra Rakdos' Return. Um, he has the two Ground Seals, which will be fantastic in this matchup. Uh, at the same time, he has two Vraska, the Unseen, and I'm not positive he sideboards them in. Uh, there are Planeswalker, which is typically good against blue-based decks, but it's very possible that Matt Costa can just ignore a resolved Vraska. Yeah, she is kind of uh, very much like a five-mana Vindicate in a lot of situations, which is fine. So Vindicate. Yeah, <laughs> so, so it still has value. There, you know, At the same time, there's only so many five mana spells he wants to be playing. Right. And it, it, it's close as to whether or not that's going to be, that's good enough to make the cut. Cost the, fact, the fact that he has it in his board, it makes me think it's for this matchup, though. Okay. So, yeah, what, like, as far as Braska goes, like, what are you thinking he wants to be doing with it, exactly? Like, um, Vindicating and then 
plussing just, it and vindicating again. Okay, so just just double vindicate. Yeah, I mean that's typically how Vraska ends up playing out. No one really yeah. makes assassins with Vraska. And why not? <laughs> well, I mean, as fun of an idea is they typically just don't win the game. Yeah. Uh, so, looking at what Costa's got available, uh, I mentioned he's, he's you you mentioned he's got the three extra uh, or the three Thundermall Hellkites that he could bring in. He's also got two copies of Renounce the Guilds. He's got uh, one main, so that's the same split that Drew Levin had, uh, two in the board, one in the main. But I think it's a card that. Definitely comes in in this matchup against cards like Olivia uh, and potentially Sire of Insanity. As as much as uh, you know, as there's only a few targets. The three copies of Olivia, the one Sire. I think they're pretty big targets to uh, you know, especially the Sire Car yeah. cards that you really want to deal with. You want to be able to deal with uh, Vraska is of course another card that will be hit with a Renounce the Guilds should it be brought in from Jeremy. Uh, as will Deadbridge Chant. Um, yeah, and what Matt's going to look at in this matchup with a card like Renounce the Guilds is, is it actually better than any of the removal spells he's playing? And if so, which ones are, is it better than? Um, cards like, you know, he does... Right now, his removal suite, if you look at it, is three Pillar, two Turn Burn, a War Leader's Helix, one Renounce, and then they have a slew of counter spells and a couple of Verdicts. Of those, I think, you know, the most suspect of them is probably the Pillar of Flame. Uh, Pillar, the only thing that actually kills in this matchup is a Huntmaster of the Fells, which Renounce the Guilds also takes care of. Yeah. Um, because of that, it to me seems like he would be boarding in the Renounce the Guilds, even though there aren't very many cards that it hits. You know, it would hit a possible Vraska, it hits Olivia, and it does hit Sire of Insanity. Yeah, so there there are definitely some uh, some targets. It is also an answer to Rakdos Key Room. Oh yeah, yeah. Which, when, exactly. you, when you activate it, I believe it becomes a black and red three. Yeah, you're right. I didn't uh, didn't catch that. If Matt had the one renounce that he had uh, has in the main deck in that last situation, he may have been able to. Yeah, it's one of those situations which I, I remember th typically didn't come up. Uh, I learned about it when practicing in limited. When uh, you know you could activate if you had maze glider in play, you know you could activate a key and it would be flying. And I remember <laughs> it's like, oh hey, that's that's pretty neat. Yeah, like, interesting little interaction there. So it looks like we're just about ready to get underway here. Yeah, and it actually, so what's interesting is that most of Matt will probably keep almost any hand in this matchup. Uh, as we saw last game, you know, turn two, think twice is the best thing that he can be doing right now. He's really just trying to answer everything that, that Jeremy plays. Uh, presumably he's hoping, to, sometimes he hopes to answer them with threats. So if Jeremy makes a, for example, if Jeremy makes a Liliana, Matt's ideal answer is a Restoration Angel. Um, but outside of that, he's really just looking, he's looking for hands with a lot of lands and, you know, some think twices and some conditional removal spells. Yeah, definitely had a lot of lands last game, it just, uh, not that many. I mean, he didn't want that many. <laughs> Looks like he has decided not to keep his opening seven, so he's going to go to six here. Uh, looks like Jeremy may be happy with his seven. He is on the draw. Yeah, so the, for those of you, um, not knowing Matt Costa has quite a reputation, at least um, on, on the Pro Tour, for being, you know, almost a an exclusive blue player. Um, he really made a name playing blue-white Delver, both yeah. top eating Pro Tour Honolulu, and then winning the, uh, the winning, Grand Prix. Th winning the Grand Prix in Baltimore yep. uh, last year with the deck. Um, since then, I don't know if he has he. He doesn't have too many. He he has some couple finishes in playing Rug Delver in Legacy, mm -hmm. and on top of that, is one of the newer members of Team SCG up at the Pro Tour. Um, once again, yeah, cementing really a reputation as a blue player. So Matt keeps his six, leads with a Sacred Foundry, and Jeremy leads with a Stomping Grounds. So we're just gonna go land go for these first few turns. Let's see what Jeremy has on his second turn. Looks like a Rootbound Crag into Farseek. All right, and that'll give Jeremy the initiative back from Costa. Um, you know, now Jeremy will be making his threats one turn earlier. And this is the hand that Costa appears to have kept is pretty good in the matchup. He has at least two more lands. Um, he doesn't seem to have much action where his spells are concerned, but he doesn't need too much as long as he has a Sphinx's Revelation or even just Think Twice. So Matt just plays uh, Sulphur Falls. And I believe he's, uh, well, after shuffling, he's passing back, I think. Yeah, I mean, she's right now cutting Jeremy's deck off yeah. of the Thoughtseek, or shuffle-cutting shuffle his deck. Off of the, the uh, Farseek. 
and we do see on Jeremy's side that he's boarded in the Vraska. So overgrown tomb from Jeremy and he passes back. Yeah, an interesting hand, he's he's kept a bunch of five mana planeswalkers. He has a Garuk Primal Hunter and a Vraska. Be interested to see which one he goes first. I the Garuk is the prize, clearly. He may use Vraska as a test spell. Or he may just go straight for go straight for the kill because Costa did mulligan. I believe I see a renounce the guilds there in Matt's hand. Uh, so that Vraska will be dealt with presumably. Yeah, and what this is really nice for Costa is that he doesn't make him use his uh his counter spell if he has one on it, you know. It's, Jeremy's test, you know, this was, that was a test spell for counter magic, and really he didn't get to test it all, it'll see if Matt right. had any. And Kassig Wolfron is made for Bowman. And that's also a pretty relevant card here, as it really makes every creature become must answer. Yeah, you see a Huntmaster of the Fells for Jeremy. Now, notable on that Vraska play, uh, there were no targets. So she was actually just, she just came down and did nothing. Well, she plussed, because plus doesn't use a target. Plus is just until your next... Right, 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 right. So that's what I mean. She was just basically yeah, doing nothing. nothing. That's what I mean. Yeah, and that's so, fair. So you see the uh, Snapcaster on the Renounce the Guilds to deal with the Huntmaster of the Fells, leaving Jeremy with a Lone Wolf. He really only has one more business spell left in his hand. The three not the three spells he has are Bonfire of the Damned, Putrefy, and Garuk Primal Hunter. As I said before, the prize is still Garuk Primal Hunter. Yeah. It's the card he's hoping to land. Uh, what Cassie Wolfren lets him do is it lets him, be, you know, if he wants to, for example, this wolf here, he can push some extra damage through, um, which is not irrelevant right now. But And that looks like what he's yeah. going to do here. He's going to make it the wolf into a five power. And yeah. Matt's going to think twice, finds a, a Believer Restoration Angel. Looks like he is going to take the five, drop to 15. Yep, and I think Matt, he's fine taking that damage. If that's what, how Jeremy is choosing to spend his turns, Matt's probably pretty okay with that. Yeah. He's just going to swing to either flashback Restoration Angel or, or which is what he does. I was going to say or flashback thing twice. Yeah, so he does uh, throw the Restoration Angel onto the board at the end of Jeremy's turn, and now he is going to go on the offense and attack with uh, Restoration Angel and Snapcaster Mage and knock Jeremy to 15. And this is the part I really like about the blue, white, red control decks, is that we thought this whole time Matt was just trying to answer Jeremy's things, but now they saw that Jeremy's gonna, Jer so Jeremy decided to say, I'm gonna sandbag all my threats. You know, I'm not gonna make them, I'm just gonna use this Kessig Wolf run. And then Matt said, okay, fine, well if you're gonna do that, I'm going yeah. to counter race you. Right. And you suddenly see, with 15-15, Matt is on the correct side of the race, actually. Yeah. Now we know Jeremy has a Putrefy, but that, uh, that will uh, suck away some of the damage the wolf is able to deal. So it looks like wolf's just going to get in for two here, going to knock Matt to 13, and we've got that Putrefy is going to target the Restoration Angel. So, And he's going to go, it looks like using that cavern, which is still set to human, he's going to, Jeremy is going to commit harder to the board now. Yeah, so we see a Huntmaster of the Fells as the follow-up play. And, and another Matt wolf. Sphinx's Revelation for three. Interestingly enough, he didn't give a very good tell on that Sphinx's Revelation. He put his land for turn into play tap. Which yeah. Which typically, you know, means I don't have Sphinx's Revelation. Yeah. So a little bit of deception there. And plays his land for the turn, swings with Snapcaster Mage. Jeremy's going to take it and fall to 15 after gaining two off of the, uh, the Huntmaster. Yeah, and Jeremy probably knows how this story ends, as to most people watching. <laughs> um, four mana and four Supreme mana. Supreme Verdict. So uh, that'll clean things up. Nice and tidy. Yep, Jeremy, Matt up to 16, Jeremy at 15. And he's down just... to one threat, and now the question is, when is he going to pull the trigger on that Garuk? Yeah, so it and looks like lands Garuk, and uh, there you see it. There's yep. the Garuk. And you have to do it right now, because you have to think that maybe Matt Costa, if he didn't draw the counterspell off the revelation, he'd, he'd possibly do another revelation. You don't want to give him the time to draw into that counterspell. Yeah, so there you see Garuk Primal Hunter, if you haven't seen him before. And uh, he's going to make a beast yeah. there for Jeremy. So no counterspell, but rest but there is a Restoration Angel. Matt's going to have to remove the Garrick by hitting it with Restoration Angel, which is not, not the preferred way of getting rid of it, as a lot of 3-3s three are going to be made. So Matt here looks like he's flashed, flashed, back, uh, flashed back, I think, twice there, and did not find 
an answer that he yeah, wanted. Yeah, he found another think twice, yeah. uh, which he, I believe what he was digging for was War Leader's Helix. Yeah. It's possible that he could have cast another think twice to see on main phase there to see if he, had, if he was going to hit. Right. Uh, instead, he chooses to attack with Restoration Angel into the Garrick, knocking it to one loyalty counter and giving Jeremy the opportunity to use it one more time. And uh, I imagine Jeremy will have a beast coming his way this turn. Yeah, Jeremy's not concerned about at all right now about his own life totals. He shocks himself so that he can cast Bonfire. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine mass. He's casting a hard casting a Bonfire for, for, for four. four. Yeah. So think twice from Matt in response. And he finds and there is the War Leader's <laughs> Helix. So wow. I think what maybe was a little bit of a miscalculation on Matt's part, um, since he didn't have the counter spell, had he main phased that, you know, he could have outright killed the Garrick Primal Hunter. As a result, he's gonna Jeremy's gonna get a free beast token. Well, I mean, he could actually just oh, with helix, this on the stack, yeah, he, he can could do it helix now. the Garrick now. Right, and that's what he's gonna do. And uh, yeah, that is what he's gonna do. So War Leader's Helix is going to uh, deal with Garrick, put Matt up to 20, he's going to drop back to 16 from the bonfire, uh, and the board is once right. again clear except for that one beast that Jeremy got off of the, the Garrick. So all that ended up turn. costing Matt was uh, three damage on damage to the dome. It's, yeah. It's not too, I mean, it's of course valuable, but it's not game breaking at all. All right, so it looks you like know. a flashback think twice from Matt. Remember, when Revelation decks win, they tend to win big. And as you see, the Snapcaster Mage that Costa has drawn will do a huge amount of work next turn, as there is already a Sphinx's Revelation in the graveyard. So Jeremy's going to untap here. He's got to hope he doesn't draw Ground Seal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that would that would be the ideal draw for Jeremy. Right, I Bowman. think Jeremy drew something green, but I believe it was a Thrag Tusk. Well, Thrag Tusk is fine in Costa's book. Ground sure. Seal is not. Yeah. Uh, well, we're Ground, Seal, find Ground Seal actually would mean that he just he would Revelation on two right now, which you know, not yeah. not ideal. No, it was Thrag Tusk. And there's the Thrag Tusk from Jeremy. Jeremy goes up to 20, Matt down to 8 now. Right, and that's one of the things why that 3 damage really doesn't matter here, is because just with how Jun plays out, you know, mm -hmm. uh, this we're past the point where Matt can race him. It's, you know, it's now all about Revelation. He's playing a control deck with a little more tempo-oriented cards in it, but, you know, he needs to Revelation his way to victory here. Yeah, so that Beast uh, doing some work alongside Kessig Wolf Run. Yeah, well, Matt, what, I think what Matt's counting is whether or not he has to Revelation for two right here. He's wondering if this next swing, even with chump blocks, is going to be lethal. And I believe the answer is yes. Uh, next turn, one, two, three, four, he has seven. He can rule Kessig Wolfram for seven. Mm -hmm. So Jeremy can present a 12 power trampling Thrag Tusk, and that should be able to deal lethal through any number of blockers. Yeah, looks that way to me, too. Um. There's a bunch of options available, Matt. He can, you know, he can Snapcaster Revelation. He can Snapcaster War Leader's Helix. Yeah, he can Snapcaster Verdict, which just leaves a beast on the table. Not ideal either. Yeah, so he's going to go ahead just with making a Moorland Haunt token. And he's going to need a little bit of help in his draw here. Didn't get any, was he? Drew Steam Bats. So I think his hand is... Uh, Snapcaster Staker. Sacred Foundry, Steam Vents, I don't know any of the other... I think it may be another land. Yeah, I think it's just lands and Snapcaster. Uh, there, I think there's a second blue card, actually. I'm not positive yeah. what it is, but it may be a second Snapcaster range. We'll see in a second, I suppose. Yes, I think so, yeah. So, Matt with just a spirit... Jeremy with a beast and another beast. Well, one's the Thrag Tusk. Right, there's a lot of different ways Jeremy can present a lethal attack here. Yeah, Remember, the, the card that's really relevant right now is that Kessig Wolf Run from Jeremy. Yep, and he's going to go ahead and swing. I think if he plays this right, he's going to sink all the Wolf Run mana into the beast. Would be my guess. So it looks like Jeremy can pump for eight. Yep, he can make a good creature. So he can either have a 13 power trampling Thrag Tusk. Or an a 11. eleven power trampling beast, both of which are very lethal. He has to assume that Costa has an Azorius charm or something that can deal with it. And it looks like Costa's doing something here. Looks like he tapped two. That smells of a Snapcaster Mage. It certainly does. Yeah, and remember with the life gain here. There you see Snapcaster. So he's, if he's targeting Revelation, which he looks like he's setting up to do, one, 
there it would be a revelation for five. That would put Koster to 13, and actually that would mean that he can. Right, and make a make the block just like this. So Snapcaster gets in front of Thrag Tusk. Spirit gets in front of Beast. Right, with a with a Wolf Run for eight, the most that Jeremy can deal is 12 damage. <laughs> Through, by trampling the Thrag Dust, they'll deal 12, and Costa will be at 1 after the Revelation. Uh, yeah, Jeremy's going to go ahead and do that to the Thrag Tusk. All right, so that's for 8. That's gonna, So running through it, that's going to make the Thrag Tusk a 13. Right. A 13-3. It tramples for... It's going to trample for 12. Right. So in response, Matt's Costa is going to Revelation for 5. He goes up to 13, and he's going to go down to 1. Yep. And you see... Syncopate, Augur, No Bolas. help at all. He Rest, uh, yeah. Syncopate, Augur, and renounce the guilds, yeah. and more lands. So now he's, he's just a little deeper. Maybe that top card of his deck is exactly what he needs. Well, Augur just and Bolas can help, can help a bit, but he needs a kill spell in here as well. And Binds a, a Thunder, thunder Mahal Mahal kite. That's not going to do anything because of the Pesic Wolf run. Yeah. He, uh... So it's Augur or Bust here. He's going to Augur. Augur finds, finds Azorius Charm, War Leader's Helix, and a Turnburn. Yeah, those are three very nice cards. You know, you have to think that Costa wishes he'd have drawn some of those off the Revelation. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would which rather have him in his hand. So he's yeah <laughs> sitting there thinking what of the three he wants. He initially well, was looking like he was going for the War Leader's Helix. Well, the Turnburn is that would be the ideal card because it deals with both halves. Of, it's a double kill spell. Because right. Jeremy kind of has three creatures in play. Except that if he Turnburns here, he's going to die depending on what gets Kessig Wolf Runned. Um, because Costa has so few life, he doesn't really... He's going to have to use the kill spell before Jeremy decides what to cast a ghoul from. Yeah, he can't just sit back and go, okay, I'll put the, th the auger in front of your Thrag Tusk. Yeah, and I think that's going to actually make Jeremy's attack lethal no matter what Matt chooses to do. Uh, because because Matt Co Costa has to preemptively war leader see something, you know, Jeremy will swing and say, okay, any effects? And if he says no, he'll be like, all right, take three, you know. Right. So because Costa only has one kill spell, I'm not sure how he gets out gets out of this one. Oh, well, okay, yeah, he, he has have more land haunt. haunt. That, yeah. is, that would be how. Okay, I will correct myself. All right. <laughs> yeah, it, it, these decks, uh, not used to seeing Moreland Haunt in these decks. Uh, He's going to go ahead and cast Thunder Maw Hellkite as a blocker out of his hand. I shouldn't be shocked. That's uh, actually pretty good here as well. So, all right. So what, what we're looking at is that Costa can make two, but can block both creatures here. Presumably blocking Augur to one. I think it's going to be Augur to the Thrag Tusk and Hellkite to the 3 3. And then as soon as Bowman tries to, uh, to Wolf run one, to of, wolf them. Run one of them, he then you're going to see more Leader Celix. Actually, he may, he may block the other way around so that he gets more trades. Yeah, okay. I would actually, yeah, come to think of it, that sounds more correct. Well, it, it all depends. Which Because if he blocks the Thunder or Hellkite to the Thrag Tusk and Jeremy pumps the Thrag Tusk, Right. Then Costa will be facing down two attackers next turn and it'll still be lethal. Um, if he, so I think he can either choose to try to save his Thunder Maw and draw a blocker, or he can choose to try to kill off the token and then attempt to draw a turn burn. So it looks like it's all irrelevant because just the beast is coming in uh, for Jeremy and Matt's going to just double block. Well, and just the beast is really... It's really a peculiar attack. It certainly is. So it looks like here comes Kessig Wolf Run yeah. for... Well, he's looks like he says five. Yeah, Matt's got to be pretty happy with how this turned out. He's going to for five, that's eight, and Matt's actually just fine letting that trade happen. Remember, his creatures didn't really matter. Yeah, there. he was just trying to buy time to a far seek from Jeremy to follow things up. It's so interesting that Jeremy did not decide to pump for six. If it was six, he, Matt Costa would have had to have played the War Leader's Helix in his hand because that one trample damage would have been lethal. That's yeah, very strange because he's got the mana to do it, too. Right. It, maybe he was bluffing a, a certain spell. It's really hard to say. And Matt is going to end the turn, or end, at the end of Jeremy's turn, make a spirit out of that Moreland Haunt and draws a counterflux. Yeah, so. so a little late. I mean, it'll actually be pretty good for a top deck. It'll counter any of Jeremy's top decks, provided we ever get to that spot. Um, because Matt, because of how that last turn played out, though, Matt's suddenly in the lead here. He, in my opinion, he has right. the ability to blank and one attack off that Thrag Tusk from his War Leader's Helix. He has a counter spell for the next card that Jeremy Bowman draws. All Matt needs to find is a way to answer the second half of that Thrag Tusk, and he should be in the clear this game. Yeah, he's got. Uh, 
Snapcaster is, a, is one of the answers he could find. Just uh, a Sphinx of Revelation, a Revelation, a nice way. Mage. Um, really, and then another turn burn turn is still burn. there. Yeah, there's a lot of good answers here. So, Azorius Charm, even. So here comes Thrag Tusk attacking, and uh, I believe. Yeah, he's, he, rather he's, than blocking, he's just going to go ahead and war leaders. Well, yeah, sorry, there was a block. Yeah, trample and he, was just, given. he just gave it trample. He didn't pump it at all. Uh, war leaders Helix deals with the Thrag Tusk, puts Matt up to five, and leaves Jeremy with a beast. Yeah, so he has Is it Staticaster and Renounce the Guilds in hand. None of those will help with this beast token. He's going to need some help on this draw, and he draws Sulfur Balls. Sulfur Balls so. I don't believe Matt has. Yeah, it's Counterflux. Right. I don't believe that Matt has an answer here. To the three three, the three three. Just if Jeremy just pumps the three three, yeah, for lethal, and blocks made. Seeing if Jeremy's gonna pump it for lethal. Uh, Tessie Wolf run is going to give it enough damage. He's gonna pump it for everything. He does not have anything. I don't believe he does. Yeah, he's looking at the graveyard. graveyard. I don't think he does he either. Doesn't no. have it. So, so Jeremy Bowman defeats Matt Costa two games to zero. Yeah, that was, uh, again, surprising. I think game one was just, you know, one of those games, again, Matt just draws, he just floods out. Yeah. And uh, I, you know, so, so he really didn't have much of a chance there. He probably could have verdicted a little earlier, maybe, I think, in that game. But yeah, I mean, the first game we agreed that he was a little he pl a little too conservative with the Supreme Verdict. Mm -hmm. That second game, it's very, it's interesting. So with this blue, white, red flash deck, it's not...